I am Tracy Bunkers with Bunkers Handmade Originals and today I'm going to talk to you about how to work with unspun fiber. So say you are a knitter or a crocheter, you've seen all these lovely hand dyed spinning fibers but you don't know how to spin. You feel like you're left out. Not the case. I'm going to show you how you can work with them. And you can make all kinds of cool things just like you would with yarn. Here's a scarf that I am making. I'm about halfway through. You can see I don't even have the needle in it. This is being knitted and the stitches don't drop, which is a really cool feature, little bonus of working with unspun fiber. They stay put. Here's another scarf that I am making. This is also knitted and uh, might have a little crochet in it, but it has some commercial yarn used with it as well, just for some accents but it is mainly all unspun fiber. So you can do all kinds of cool things with it. You can also make hats, mittens, whatever you want. And there are some things you need to know before you choose your fiber. For one thing, you don't want to use superwash fiber. That means it's machine washable. The reason for that is superwash fibers are too slick. You need something that is going to have a little tooth and won't slip slide away. So you need a fiber that's at least 50% merino or wool. The other part of it can be blends like um, this is a merino and bamboo blend which is a 40% bamboo 60% merino that works really well. This is also a bamboo merino blend. These are all fibers that I have hand dyed and I also really like to use silk and merino for this. That's what these two are, and it is a 80% merino, 20% silk, so it works really well. These are 100% merino, and the form that they come in, these are called rovings or tops. So when you undo one of these, it looks like this. It looks kind of like a big poofy rope. So you want to have your fiber, and it needs to be in this form. You want fiber that is well prepared, meaning it's not real hairy or kind of fly away. It needs to look like it's in pretty good shape. And you don't want to work with fibers that are too short because then it won't be very durable when you knit with it. Since you aren't spinning this, the length of the fiber needs to be caught in several stitches. If you aren't sure how long it is, you can pull it out. You probably can't see what I'm doing, but this is about the staple length of the fiber in this that I'm using. So you can see that I can work several stitches with that. All right, so that is the main thing. Just remember it needs to be at least 50% merino and you should be okay. And uh, now why don't you come on in a little closer so you can see exactly how to do this. Come on, don't be shy. All right, now that we're a little close up, I'm going to show you how I strip the fiber. So I just kind of, I'm about halfway down in the middle. Just put my fingers through and start pulling. There'll be some thick parts, some thin parts. See, I don't worry about that. Then I just kind of work my way down. You need to be sure your hands are farther apart than the staple length. If they're too close, you won't be able to pull it at all. So I'm just kind of pinching and pulling. You don't want to pull too hard or too fast or you'll pull it apart. And then just go back and see which areas are a lot thicker. I don't worry too much about getting it consistent. You don't want it to be too different, too thick and thin, but I don't mind if it's a little, there's some variation. It uh, gives it a nice handmade quality. All right, so now you just cast on like you would with yarn. If you're crocheting, you would just crochet. And I like to do a cable cast on. I'll just cast on about 10 stitches. So it can be tricky. Looks like I kind of split that. So casting on and working the first row, those are the trickiest. After that, then it's a lot easier. All right. 
If you get a thick area, you can just stop and draft it some more. All right, so that's 10. Now I'll start knitting. All right, so I've knitted my first row, and now it's a lot easier to tell where each stitch is. So now I'm going to flip it around and purl. Now say you're working along and you either come to the end of your piece that you have drafted or say it just gets pulled apart. No problem. That's where you just overlap it. Lick your fingers. Overlap. Do a little twist right where the ends are. And that just needs to hold it together until you work over that section. Came undone. That's all right. <laughs> there. So, the great thing about that is the only ends you really have to deal with are the very beginning and the very end. Everything else gets overlapped and worked in. And you just keep going. So it really is good to make a swatch because things can shrink. One hand wash this, of course. So make a swatch and hand wash it, let it dry, and then measure for your gauge. All right, so that's the gist of it. Looks pretty cool. Since we're close up, I'll show you the scarf. So I'm just kind of doing a big basket weave pattern with it. It's really nice and soft. And then here is this freeform scarf that I'm making. So it's really fun. Got different stitch patterns going on. Knit some I-core bobbles. This part here is silk. It'll be really cool when it's all done. So that's all there is to it. I told you it's pretty easy. And uh, why don't you check out my lovely hand-dyed spinning fibers to use this way. They're on my website at tracybunkers.com. Thanks. Bye.